Brilliance Audio presents The Measure of the Magic, Legends of Shannara, by Terry Brooks. Performed by Phil Giganti. They kept their cover until the slope leveled out, and the rocks gave way to huge old cedars and willows that marked the northern boundary of the mares. They were still too far south, and would have to skirt the edges until they reached the far north end if they wanted a clear, safe passage. Neither of them fancied trying to navigate the mares at night, so they resigned themselves to what needed doing and set out, keeping just within the shelter of the trees so that they could not be seen. It was slow going because the woods were thicker at the edges of these ponds and swamps that formed the mirrors, and required angling in all directions to avoid ravines and drops. The trick was to keep moving. Once they had put enough distance between themselves and whatever was stalking them, they could slow their pace. Prue had just finished estimating that they were still four or five hours away from the Elfitch, and safety, when her instincts kicked in anew and she felt the familiar crushing waves start to close in on her. Pan, she hissed, causing him to turn and come back to her immediately. It's following us. It's figured out which way we've gone. He was quiet as he stared back into the growing darkness, his gaze fixed on something she couldn't see but could easily imagine. We have to go faster, she urged. He shook his head. We have to stop and face it, but not here. Not out in the open where it will have an advantage over us. She waited, already knowing what he was going to say. Even so, the words were chilling when he spoke them. We have to lead it into the mirrors. It was nearing midnight, the darkness illuminated by the light of stars that had appeared from behind broken cloud cover to filter down through the heavy canopy of the trees. Pantera Q crouched within a thick stand of brush no more than six feet from where Prue was hiding, her slender body flattened against the ground at the base of an ancient willow, stretched out between tree roots that hid her completely from view. She was covered with leaves and all but buried in the earth, a good choice for concealment from someone hunting them. Pan's position was more vulnerable, but that was his intent. She had objected, but he had pointed out that her instincts would warn her when whatever tracked them got close and then he could employ his staff's magic to protect himself. To signal that approach, he had tied a length of string about his finger and given her the other end. When she sensed the danger to be close enough, she would give it a yank to let him know. But he was counting on the straw men he had built with leaves and brush stuffed inside their extra clothing to draw their stalker's attention away from where they hid. Wrapped in blankets and placed back against the trees at the edge of a broad clearing, fronted on the far side by the shores of a lake, the straw men appeared to be the boy and girl asleep. It was good enough that it would fool almost anyone, even in daylight. Still, Pan wasn't taking any chances. He had his staff ready, and he was expecting to use it. The minutes crawled by as they waited. An hour passed. Pan scanned the forest over and over, searching for movement. Prue was so still she might have been sleeping, but he knew she wasn't. She could lie silent like that for hours. He had seen her do it. Her patience was phenomenal, the kind that defied everyone's expectations. She told him once she had practiced it as a child, when there was nothing better to do than sit and watch for birds to land in her backyard. She had been only three or four. The yank of the string on his finger caught him by surprise, and he yanked back to let her know he was paying attention. He slipped the string from his finger and took a new position, crouched and ready. More time passed, and nothing happened. He scanned the lake shore and the clearing, then the edges of the trees and back again, waiting. He glanced repeatedly at Prue, wanting to speak to her, to ask her what was happening, but it was so dark by now he could barely make out the tree roots between which she had settled herself and he could not risk giving himself away. He kept looking and listening, growing impatient. Their stalkers still did not appear. He had passed the point where he thought their plan had any real chance of working when Prue screamed. Her scream was high and piercing and filled with fear, and he reacted instinctively, rolling quickly to one side as he tried to bring the staff's magic to bear. The attack came from behind, a black-garbed figure catapulting out of the darkness in a soundless attack that told him at once what had happened. Their stalker, a man judging by his size, had figured out they had laid a trap, circled around through the mirrors, and come at them from behind, if not for Prue's scream. <laughs>